The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion, everybody. We're very excited to be here, and happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Uh, we're going to talk about all of the NFL Thanksgiving uh, games that are going to be going on. We've got the Lions, Packers, Commanders, Cowboys, and we've got the 49ers, Seahawks, and then we're also going to get into some of the college football Friday games and get in touch in on those games before they happen. Some big-time games and some games that have uh, a lot that go, that goes into them. Uh, so we're going to talk about all of these games. I want to bring in my co-host for this evening as well, or I guess this uh, morning when you guys are seeing this. Um, but I got Blake Lane from Mobile, Alabama. He's back with us. Blake, how you doing, man? What is up, everybody? Glad to be back, Josh. Uh, excited to be here. I know I've I've been away for a couple weeks, man. Uh, went up to the University of Oregon and got to catch a game there. Got to see Caleb Williams play live. Got to see the Bo Nix perform, man. Uh, that was a heck of a trip, and uh, and just been with the family, man, traveling, going in and out of town, uh, and just been busy, busy, busy towards the end of this year. But uh, I'm glad to be back, brother, and ready to talk some sports. Heck yeah, man! I mean, it's it's hey, we we even had a little bit of a hiatus just as a show as a whole, just because you know schedules not lining up, and then uh, whenever you're in the middle of Kansas, sometimes those those uh, hotel Wi-Fi's aren't strong enough to even connect and get everybody together virtually but man we're back and we got some some football to talk about and that's always the most fun thing to talk about on this show for us but before i do get any further i want to first mention our first sponsor of the of the uh, episode and it's big frig it's a sponsor that we bring up all the time it's an amazing product Uh, i've usually always got my big frig tumbler here either full of coffee or water whatever i gotta drink for the day and uh, today it's just water for now because i don't really need any more coffee but uh, yeah, it, Big Frig is just an amazing product, and we want everybody to go and check out Big Frig. You can go to bigfrig.com, that's B-I-G-F-R-I-G.com, and you can check out all of their tumblers, their coolers, all kinds of amazing products that they put together over there. A huge thanks to Brock for hooking us up with some amazing products that they gave us. They gave us the, the tumblers, at which we show off just about every time, uh, and then we've also got the coolers, and the Badland coolers are the best way to go. When you compare them to competitors, they're just as durable, just as nice. Uh, and just as effective, an amazing gift if you're looking for a gift for the holiday season. Uh, so go over to bigfrig.com and check it out. Uh, they've also got all kinds of gear and stuff like that as well for you to check out. So go check out bigfrig.com. That's B-I-G-F-R-I-G.com. And just for listening to this episode, we'll give you 20% off over there because we've worked out a deal with Big Frig. Uh, so if you use code R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-2-0, that's rising to 20 you can get yourself 20% off an amazing product, an amazing deal. And if Jeremy was here, he would say, you will not be disappointed. So go check them out, bigfrig.com, and go check out their amazing products, tumblers, coolers, so much more. But man, let's get into it. Uh, I'm excited. It's Thanksgiving. And again, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. It's a, a big holiday for my family. We usually celebrate pretty hard for Thanksgiving, get the whole family together, uh, maybe, maybe sing some karaoke, watch some football, eat way too much food, uh, and maybe just, you know, go out and, and have a nice little stogie out on the back back porch uh, with each other and everything too. And I, I've heard that, that stogie is, is also a term for weed, which that's not what I do. It's just a cigar. It's just a nice, nice relaxing cigar out on the, out on the back porch with the family and everything. But uh, let's get into the NFL Thanksgiving Day games because, man, I'm, I'm always excited. I feel like that's one of the most exciting NFL days of the year is whenever it's Thanksgiving, you get to see the winner go and take a big old bite of the turkey leg. And it's it's just always a fun packed uh, you know day full of NFL games where they're always really tight games. They're always really competitive games, games that, that you you want to keep your eyes on uh, all four quarters. Let's start off with the Lions Packers because this Detroit has hosted this annual Turkey Day since uh, 1934. So I mean that's crazy just seeing how far back that's gone. And I, I, I always love this matchup, too, whenever you get the Lions and the Packers Thanksgiving. It just feels like the, the perfect Thanksgiving game. And you get these two teams, they go out there and fight. The Lions right now are favored seven-and-a-half-point favorites, uh, and they're sitting at eight and two this this year. I mean, that's just an incredible turnaround from a couple of seasons ago where they don't even make it to the playoffs. And even last year, they don't make, they don't make it into the playoffs. And now you've got a team that's looking like a Super Bowl contender out of the Lions. They, they look very, very well-rounded. They're very balanced. Uh, their defense is being good enough to win games for them, and their offense just turns on the Jets whenever they need to. Uh, we just saw an, an amazing game from them against the Bears where they had a big-time comeback uh, and, and being able to win that one. 
And if you would be backed up to to week four, the Lions, uh, they won thirty four to twenty in this matchup against the Packers. So I mean that was that was one game, and it's hard to beat the same same team twice. But the way that they handled that game, it just seemed like the 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 Lions just had that game in hand the entire way through. And now uh, we've got the Lions and Packers match, matching up again for Thanksgiving Day. Blake, how you seeing this game going? Uh, I like Green Bay to cover here. I like the Lions to win, but I like Green Bay to cover the spread at seven and a half. And only because uh, short week games, man, Thursday games, it's tough, right? Short week, um, you know, your body, you're probably not feeling great. Um, Still probably a little sore. Thursday night games are usually a little sluggish. You're having to play at 11 in the morning. Um I just think it's going to be low scoring, and and the Detroit offensively, uh, golf's been struggling a little bit, and uh, I need to see a good game out of him. Uh, Jameer Gibbs has picked it up. David Montgomery goes out uh, with a leg injury, and he steps in and doesn't miss a beat. And now they're sharing the load in the backfield. Uh, they have a two-headed monster back there now. Amon uh, St. Brown, he has been – a weapon all year. Uh, they do have weapons on this offense. Uh, they have a quarterback that has played in a Super Bowl. Uh, and I agree with you. Yeah, they're Super Bowl contenders because of this defense. This defense is electric, man. Um, they, they rush the passer. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson is an absolute freak. Uh, their back end is, is decent, pretty good. You know, um, I think they have a great coach. Um, yeah, I, I really like Dan Campbell and just the energy that he brings too, man. I mean, he's just, he's just a fun coach to be around and to, to listen to his interviews and everything. And you can tell he's got a lot of heart and passion into the game too. Yeah. And the city of Detroit deserves this, right? They've lost oh, yeah. for so many years. Uh, so th- they deserve to have a good team and the lions, the lions, you know, they, they deserve this. So, um, yeah, Dan Campbell, I've gotten to listen to him speak. Uh, in in the city of Mobile here uh, for the Senior Bowl, and uh, and he's a dude, man. He's a dude. So big fan of the Lions. I think Green Bay covers here just because of the Thursday um, early kick, you know, short week. I get it, uh, but I think the Lions win this game. Yeah, I, I like that pick too. I mean, looking at it, I I, I definitely want to go with the Lions to win. Uh, I just don't think. The Packers have what it takes. I don't think Jordan Love, even though he just had one of the best games, I think he threw like 322 yards, one of the best games of his career. So, I mean, I I think he's turning things around, and I think he's got potential, and more potential than I think a lot of people are giving him credit for at the beginning beginning of the year. And I understand why nobody really saw anything out of this, too, because we never really saw anything, you know, really special out of him. But just the pure fact that, you know, he, he comes out and he has a great game last game. I think he's going to have a better game. Uh, and I'm kind of on the opposite side as you. I think it's going to be a little bit of a higher scoring game. Uh, I, I guess I don't really know what you call a high scoring game anymore because I just feel like anything's up for grabs. You know, whenever, whenever you've got uh, like a, a few weeks ago, we were laughing because we saw the Iowa. Uh, I'm trying to think of who they were going against that week. Uh, it might have been Iowa, Illinois or something like that it was like 28 and a half. And then the Washington uh, versus who was it? Washington USC was sitting at like 77 and a half, 78 and a half, just the vast difference of, of games. But I, I think this one could turn out to be, uh, man, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to pick lions 38, 34. Uh, so maybe I will take, uh, maybe I will take the, the Packers to, to cover like you're thinking too. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to say it's going to be a close game, higher scoring game, and coming down to the wire too, just because it's a, like you said, it's a, a Thursday game, it's a Turkey Day game. There's all kinds of energy that goes into these games, but I think the Lions are just too good this year, and, and I think they they look really solid. And that defense, man, we remember watching them last year, and they were a joke. They, you know, they couldn't they couldn't catch a, a, a cold. You know, like I just looking at that defense, the way that they've turned around and the energy that they bring. Uh, I mean, they've got players. We know that they've got the dudes over there and they finally turned it around this season and they're, they're looking a lot better. I'm right there with you, Josh. Uh, like I said, man, I, I think this team is set for a deep playoff run. Um, obviously uh, the NFC, you, you know, um, you got the Eagles and then, and the Niners and, um, 
there, there's there, there's a lot of traffic in the NFC, uh, but I look at it, man, and and they're in prime position in the North, and uh, you know if if you if you can win that first one, and and you're probably what they'd go to San Francisco or Philly. Um, I think they match up better with San Francisco. I think they could beat San Francisco. Um, so hey. I think Detroit is ready, man. I think they're ready to take that next step. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, I man. Looking at their the way that they've been playing all season long, I, I everyone wanted to call the Chiefs game a fluke, but that's also opening day for both of them. It was, it was the opening game, and I mean, they yeah. they pieced it together. I, I know, I know, Mahomes wasn't really on it. They didn't have Travis Kelsey, uh, and then you've got you know, uh, was it Kadarius Tony dropping passes? And I know you can call it a fluke if you want, but I think this Lions team is for real, and I'm I'm right there with you, man. Um, but let's jump over to the Commanders Cowboys, the second game on in that NFL slate on Turkey Day. We've got the uh, Commanders, uh, and you know, looking at them. They're, they're surprisingly better uh, this year, and I, I think there's a lot of potential to go into this team. But, I mean, and, until they can figure out their their name for sure, uh, I'm not ever going to be able to root for them. And I don't know, just looking at them, I think Sam Howell, uh, the way that he's looked, I, I think he mm-hmm. finally looks like he's comfortable with the NFL, and I feel, I feel like he's finally starting to fit into the NFL. He's, he's looking a lot better. I think when you look at the last couple of weeks and what he's put together, I think he shows a lot of potential in his gameplay. And so I like the Commanders uh, to put up a good fight here, uh, and, and I don't think they're going to get killed by the Cowboys, but the Cowboys are looking much better, and I think it really comes down to Dak not turning the ball over. That's something that he's prone to a lot. Uh, and then looking over at C.D. Lamb, uh, my, my dude C.D. Lamb, uh, former Sooner, that dude is just going off, and this has been his best year so far, uh, you know, and it's it's definitely been the best best year of his career, and and he's looking phenomenal. And I, I know that when Dak's out there and he doesn't know where to go, that is his safety valve. He he can always rely on C.D. Lamb. He's just got such good movement and and his hip movement and his routes. His route running is is phenomenal. And then on top of that, just the sticky hands, man. He doesn't drop a pass very often. Uh, and so as long as he stays hot, I think the I, I personally think the Cowboys come out. I think they pull out the win. Uh, I didn't see what the spread was on this game. Um, but I, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm feeling like the uh, Cowboys can probably come away with the win on this. And it says 12 and a half. I don't think they win by 12 and a half. I could see it by 10. I could see them winning by 10. I don't know if they're going to cover that 12 and a half point spread, though. Uh, what are you feeling about this Cowboys commanders? First thing I want to say is uh, I misspoke. Uh, the Lions are actually a game ahead of the Niners. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, the the Lions, man, uh, they're the two seed in the NFC. So that's, man, uh, isn't that crazy? I, I just I don't I don't remember ever seeing a Lions team that I was like, man, this team is good. And and yeah, I, I know my brother, man. He would he would be ticked off to hear me say that about his Lions, but he knows it's true. Um, you know, and, and I don't know, just looking at, at the Lions, it's it's fun to see see these teams kind of come back, you know, and we see like the 49ers having their bounce back and, uh, you know, and, and these, these smaller teams, the, the Jets started to look good uh, and that was fun last year. And even the Giants came back a little bit and started looking good last year. Um, and then, you know, with the with the Eagles on their little spurt, and it's not just the same two teams the way it felt, it feels like it has been in the past. Uh, you, you're getting a good mixture of teams in there too and the Lions being one of them, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, man. So the twelve and a half in the uh, Redskins, Commanders, whatever you want to call them, uh, Washington Generals, whatever the football team. Uh, that the that twelve and a half. Yeah, that twelve and a half in Dallas. That's a lot of points in the NFL. So I like Washington to cover that. Like you mentioned with Sam Howe. Um, I think he's starting to figure it out a little bit. I know he's went through a little rough stretch, and and he's you know threw a couple picks here and there. Uh, that's expected. I, I don't think Washington has a whole lot of talent around him. Um, I don't think they got the right coach around in that organization. Um, no. no, I can agree with I you. I think it's a disaster. I think it's a disaster of an organization. Honestly. Oh, absolutely. I think it's terrible. Um, I don't know who wants to go to Washington and live in Washington and what free agent you're going to sign there. You're not, uh, it's just, it's just a disaster, but getting back to the football talk of it. Uh, 
I agree with you 100%. Dak Prescott cannot turn the ball over. Uh, this game is at home. you got to make plays. I would like to see Dallas step on their throat early. Tony Pollard running the football. Uh, CeeDee Lamb, been an absolute dog, man. Been an absolute dog. Um, what he's done, I saw in college. All right, what he's done this year, I saw it in college. I knew he was going to be great. I got to watch him at Hard Rock Stadium uh, take on Alabama in the college football playoffs when uh, him and Kyler were at Oklahoma, and uh, we knew from 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 there like this dude, this dude's a dog. Like he's going to be a he's going to be a great NFL receiver, and uh, he's been that. He's been a, a a crucial point of that Dallas offense. So. I like the Cowboys to win. I'm I'm right there with you. That seven to ten point range. I just can't. I can't. I'm never gonna take a twelve and a half point spread yeah, in the NFL. Tough. I mean, that's yeah, not in the NFL. No. Not no, not at all. Uh, there, there's a few college games that I've looked at, and like, yeah, I'll take a twelve and a half. But that's college. Uh, the NFL is just so tightly knitted, and it, and it flips from game to game in a, in a weird way. Not the same way the college does too. Uh, so the, the, that's why right. I've just. I've always had a hard time with the NFL. I feel like I've gotten into the NFL a lot more here recently. I feel like they've kind of put some of the outside noise and, and turned it down a little bit. And, you know, so it's it's been more fun to watch the NFL, and I, I can definitely say that. Um, yeah, I mean, 12 and a half points, man. I don't know. I just – on top of that, I don't I don't think this Washington team is bad. I think they're, they're a decent team. I think they've got a lot of potential, like you said. I think getting rid of your head coach. And didn't Magic Johnson buy the Commanders? Yes. Yeah. His yeah. It was like yeah, like six point some billion dollars. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, just looking at at him, maybe he can he can pull that spark into the organization and get things rolling on the right track. Who knows? But yeah, I mean, looking at that game too, I think, man, you you talk about C.D. Lamb, man. He he was always one of my favorite wide receivers from Oklahoma just because there's there's a picture I love pulling up and showing people too, where he's got five Texas dudes all around him, and I'm like, yeah, he scored on this play. And it's just it's just stupid to look at that picture and be like, no, there's no way he gets out of that. You got a dude like right on his tail, three dudes right in front of him, and another dude right on the side of him. There's no way. And, and you know, that's just the kind of player he was. Or, uh, you know, I can remember a play from K-State where they had a little jet sweep, and he rolls around, and the defense read it perfectly, and somehow he wheezes back around and goes to the other side of the field, takes off for a long touchdown. The dude's just – he's just got a, a knack for the end zone. He's got a knack for how to pull in the ball. Uh, and, and Tony Pollard – I think we just need to see more of him. I don't think he's showing the same uh, skills that he that he showed off last year. Uh, so I think he's a back that can definitely turn on the Jets and start to become a lot better than than he's looked so far this season. Uh, so it's it's going to be an exciting game. I think that's a game uh, to look at. And and like I said, I think all of these games are going to be close games and fun games to watch just because it's Thanksgiving Day uh, and all the excitement that goes on around that. And and the stadiums are usually just electrified on Thanksgiving Day too. Mm. Uh, so I'm I'm super excited about it. And it's it's usually a fun time too, being surrounded with family. You got all kinds of food just all day, just going back for snacks, uh, getting more drinks, getting more snacks, and and watching football. Uh, and doesn't get much better than that. Doesn't get much more American than that <laughs> but man, let's let's go on to the 49ers Seahawks another fun game I mean the Seahawks I, I don't know I, I expected more out of them this year because Gino had a big year last year and I think he looked really good he's just not looking the same way and uh, he's kind of regressed since last season he's got dudes he, uh, he's he's got uh Jackson Smith and Jigba now he's got DK Metcalf he still has Tyler Lockett out there uh, and and then uh, you know just the the running backs that they have too. They, I mean, you just lean on Kenneth Walker and just give him the ball. Uh, you know, just looking at what they've got there in Seattle, I feel like this team should be a lot better than what they're showing up this year. And they they just don't have it. Uh, I don't feel like the team chemistry is is clicking this year. It could turn around and they they could still make a, a good push for the end of the season. But the 49ers, man, this defense, uh, obviously Brock Purdy doing what he's doing, and the whole offense. We can talk about how star studded this team is on the 49ers. And I don't know how they do it. Now they bring in Chase Young to add to that defensive line. Man, th this defense is scary. And I don't know. I mean, I think that was the right move for them to pick up Chase Young. And now you've got the scariest defense in the in the entire league. And it wouldn't surprise me one bit to see them go and push that that berth the same way that they did last year. Uh, you know, and it might come down to that Philly San Francisco game to to kind of decide the the winner over there in the NFC. But uh, I don't know. Looking at this, I guess my, my pick, I'm going to take the 49ers. I don't think this is going to be a big time blowout, but I do think they cover the spread. I think it was sitting at plus or at, at minus seven. Uh, and I, mm -hmm. I'm going to pick them maybe a lower scoring game, like 28, 17, 49ers. 
I agree with you. Uh, I think you hit the nail on the head here. I like the 49ers for all the same reasons that you do. Way too many weapons on offense. Oh, yes. This offense is loaded. I mean, even even if you want to go to your tight end, man, you got George Kittle. Yeah. I mean, come on. You, you go to your I, offensive line, and you've got Trent Williams. I mean, that dude yeah. alone just – I mean, that is the most important piece on, on the line, too, is that, that left tackle. Uh, and, and see what what he can he can do. You could say your worst player on offense is Brock Purdy. Yeah, that's sad, dude. I mean, that's that's crazy. Uh, just looking at the at there. I mean, you got Brock Purdy, you got Christian McCaffrey, you got Brandon Ayuk, uh, you got Debo Samuel, and then George Kittle, and then you go to your 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 offensive line, and I mean, all of them are studs. But then obviously Trent Williams being the the big time star. Now you go over on the defense, and you got guys like Warner, and they bring brought in Hargrave this past year too, uh, and then you know the, now that you having Chase Young, and you've got Bosa. I mean, the the the, the whole defense, even I mean, just either side of the ball. I don't. Th- this is what I wish you would see more in the NFL: is guys not getting greedy, trying to go for the cash, and just building a, a good team. I mean, like, hey, this, these are dudes that I want to fight with. These are dudes that I think we have enough talent to win, and stick with it. And and, and Kyle Shanahan, uh, the the play calling that he makes, you know, he's just he's a wizard. Uh, so I, I really like this 49ers team, man. I agree, man, and uh, I think they get it done. I think they cover the spread. Uh, and I agree with you on the Geno point. He's he's regressed. He's taken a step back. And I really don't want to hear uh, that it's his offensive line, man. Watch the Seahawks play. He, he makes some errant throws out there. Like uh, He tries to fit some balls in that I'm like, man, why did you just throw that? You know. And don't tell me he doesn't have receivers because he's got two really good running backs and yeah. he's got really good receivers, one being an NFL superstar in DK Metcalf, one being a rising rookie. Uh, with uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba, and you, then you still got the crafty veteran and Tyler Lockett out there. So, like, he's got dudes. Um, so I, I pulled up the stats to compare to with Brock Purdy. Who, let, let's be honest, Brock Purdy is not really a special quarterback. I, no. I don't, I don't think he is. I think, I think he's a good quarterback. I think he fits in that program and right, in, in that, that scheme. But yep. you, you compare Brock Purdy to Geno Smith this year, uh, and I, I pulled this up. So he's. Uh, 193 for 275, Brock Purdy, compared to Geno Smith's 218 for 334. Uh, and so Geno has way more attempts and completions, and Brock Purdy's sitting there at 2,662 yards, Geno at 2,404 yards. And then the touchdowns, you got eight touchdowns to five interceptions for Brock Purdy, 12 touchdowns, seven interceptions for Geno. I mean, that, that comparison is crazy. And Brock was out for at least a game and a half. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, th- 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 it's just... I don't know. Looking at Gino, I I believe that Gino has this skill set because you you've seen it off and on since he's been in the league. I don't think last year was was anything super surprising because we know that he, what he's capable of. Look back at his as West, his West Virginia days. He's capable of of doing some witchery out on the field. Um, so I mean, I, I I like Gino a lot. I just we haven't seen it from him this year, and I agree with you. I don't think you can blame it on his line, his receivers, nothing. They've got weapons. I'm with you. I'm with you, Josh. Uh, I, like I always say, man, I'm with you when you're right, and uh, and you're right. Like Gino's got to step up if this team wants a shot to make a late playoff push. It starts with Geno Smith, man. You got to be better. Yeah, and and what better way to do it too than to knock off the 49ers? Really, one one of the top dogs in in your entire conference. I won't say they're the top dog anymore, just because they've had some losses here recently. They're sitting at seven and three right now on the season, so. I won't say they're the, the top dogs because I think Philly has just been the dudes right now. I mean, that that defense over there in Philadelphia is just rocking on all cylinders. I think their offense has a lot of kinks that they can work out and they can turn turn on the Jets and become really dangerous. Uh, I, I'm, I'm picking it right now. I, I think Philly ends up winning the Super Bowl this year. Uh, wow. I Just looking at, at what they have, and I think we've talked about this too with Jalen Hurts. The, the dude is super lovable by his work ethic, and, and I, I love I love seeing him prove haters wrong. He looks, he looks at his game and sees where haters are coming at him and saying, well, you can't pass the ball. Well, I'll, I'll prove you wrong. And he passes the ball. Uh, you know, he's, he's not going to convert every single tush push, but then he does. Uh, you know, just the, the dude is just phenomenal. And I think him going into that Super Bowl, and really it feels like the reason why they lost was that one really big, uh, you know, fumble, which ended up being a scoop and score. So, I mean, you take that out of that, that game, and I think the Eagles – could have very easily won that game. So uh, I think I think Jalen knows that, and I think he's hungry for it, man. 
uh, and he knows what that championship feels like, not in the NFL, but he knows what a championship feels like. And, and I, I just, I, I think he's got the work ethic to, to make it work. He's a heck of a player, Josh. Like, yeah, um, that Oklahoma quarterback, man. That Oklahoma QB. And ain't no yeah. Alabama QB. He's that Oklahoma no. QB. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got we to gotta sprinkle on a little bit of Alabama hate there for you, don't we? Um, yeah. But, man, let's let's jump over to the college football games because, obviously, this show, we thrive on college football. I usually try to make it a point not to wear my team on camera. Um, but uh, today I was just wearing it, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to rock it. Um, I'm gonna throw on the hat and everything, uh, so you know I just I, I I'm I'm cheering for my Sooners. Not only do we have to win, but then on Saturday I'm gonna be the biggest BYU fan um, because BYU knocking off Oklahoma State would put Oklahoma there, uh, and then I, I guess I can't say anything on air just in case it doesn't go through. But we, we've got a lot of things hope, uh, that we're hopeful for too, and where maybe I could see Oklahoma live uh, there at the Big Twelve Championship too. So. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for Oklahoma, and we'll talk about that Oklahoma game. Uh, but first, let's start off with Iowa and Nebraska, because I, obviously, for me, my family's Nebraska fans, and I, I've been cheering for them, man. I, I think when you really take a step back and look at how the season has gone for Nebraska, I think that, that the offense, obviously, is the issue. That's why they're losing games. They can't, they can't put up 20 points. And their defense is on the field way too much. They're they're causing turnovers on, or they're they're converting, or I guess how do I say that properly? They're they're turning the ball over way too much on offense, and they're leading the nation. Har- Harburg came in and showed a little bit of a spark for Nebraska, but it didn't it didn't really do the trick. It wasn't enough, uh, and obviously Jeff Sims is not the guy. But then Brock Purdy came in last week and really showed uh, against Wisconsin showed that man he can put up put up some points because they score 14 points in the first two drives and then they fall flat and they just can't do anything after that and a huge huge shout out to Wisconsin's defense Luke Fickle had that defense cracked into shape and they've been doing that a lot this year where they just they know when to turn on the Jets and they know how to adjust um, but now Nebraska going against Iowa uh, you know I I think obviously the the, the the thing is, who who can actually put more points on the board? Uh, and I'm really tempted. I think last time I checked, I need to look this up again. Last time I checked, I think this this points total was sitting at 26 and a half, and I'm really tempted to take the under. Um, but I, I'm I'm going to be a homer here. I'm going to I'm going to cheer for Nebraska, uh, and I'm going to say Nebraska is going to win nine to three. Uh, you know, just something stupid like that. Maybe 12, 12 to nine. Let's let's call it a last minute field goal to win the game for Nebraska. Um, but man, this Iowa defense is tough. I don't think Nebraska is going to be able to put in a ball in the end zone. I think Brock Purdy is the guy you got to go with. Or sorry, I think I've said Brock Purdy before too, but uh, Chubba Purdy, uh, Brock Purdy's little brother. I think he's the guy that you've got to go with. But man, I, I don't know. It's it's going to be a tough one. But I'm going to cheer for for the the Corn Huskers to pull it out and end up winning that game on Friday. Put the over under at ten, man. <laughs> over under at ten. Nine to zero. <laughs> First one, first one to get closest six to three. To 10. Yeah, whoever gets closest to ten wins, man. It's sitting at twenty six and a half. Nebraska is actually favored by two and a half points. That is really shocking. Uh, that's mm. man. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with them. I'm going I'm to rock with them. But uh, plus, you you got to win one more if you're Nebraska, man. You not only do you got to beat your rival, and and if you're around here, it, you know how annoying those Iowa fans are. So you've got to beat your rival, but then you need one more win for a bowl game, man. And that's big right now. That's really big. I think it was since 2016 since they've been to a bowl game. So I mean, they, they need to get to a bowl game, man. Yeah, that's big for the program. Um, look. I haven't watched much of Nebraska. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> um, but one thing I can say is Matt Rule has done a great job in, in year one with the Nebraska program. Um, they just – I mean, they missed on a portal quarterback. They missed. And uh, I feel like that kind of set them back this year. They should have got Peyton Thorne. Yeah. They should have. <laughs> they should have. Um, but yeah, they missed, man. They missed on a on a on a portal quarterback, and it happens, you know. It happens. That's a the portal uh, is really a rental service, if we're being honest, you know. And I think that was just a bridge gap get. And if you can get to a bowl game, if you can beat Iowa, you can get to a bowl game, man. That's that's really all you can ask for in year one with how bad that program has been over the over the years, you know. Um, when I look at this Iowa game. 
I would I don't know how they move the ball on Nebraska's defense. But then again, I look over at the other side of the ball and I say the same thing. I don't know how Nebraska moves the ball on Iowa's defense. <laughs> yeah, I don't so know. Uh, it, it's going to be We really be looking at like a 6 to 3 game, for real. We, we really could. And it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me. I'm I'm tempted to take the under in this game even at 26 and a half. And what's funny, as I looked it up just now too, the money is rocking on the under, like just yeah. killing the under. Like I, I, it's, it's showing right now, 96% in on Vegas is going on the under. Man, it's going to be like 41 to 38. Watch. <laughs> watch it. Just watch it. Oh man. That's, that's, that would be crazy. Uh, I remember last year I, I took the over in that, that game. It was like a pretty low, I think it was like 34 or something like that. Whatever it was, they ended up hitting it on that last uh, that last score that they had just barely hit it by one point, and I was sweating the whole game. Like, come on, you gotta, you gotta hit this one, uh, man. I, I, it's, it's gonna be a fun one, and I'm excited for it because obviously I'm gonna be around my, my family watching that game. But at the same time, I'm gonna be watching the Oklahoma game, and we'll jump over to Oklahoma TCU. This is a really big one because Oklahoma needs to win. Uh, and then they need to rely on BYU to win. As as long as those two things happen, uh, Oklahoma bumps them, themselves into that that championship game. Uh, and that that could be really huge for this program too. Uh, looking at BV's second year, had a really really f- hot start uh, and looked phenomenal. Uh, and then right after that Texas game just went downhill uh, with a bad game against UCF and then uh, you know losing to Kansas and Oklahoma State in back-to-back games and you can you can make all of the excuses that you want for why they lost against Oklahoma State uh, they just didn't perform well uh, and and the offense has really been the issue this year just on on the this standpoint that you, you don't need to score 50 points I think a lot of fans just think that the offense is doing bad if they're not scoring 50 points the reason why the offense has been the the reason for these losses for the two losses on Oklahoma's record is that the offense is either turning the ball over in, in really bad spots uh, and, or they're just putting the defense back on on the field too much and this defense I, I think the stats don't show what this defense really is they're, they're they are getting turnovers uh, and and they're winning the turnover battle. And the, the defense has been battling. They've just been on the field way too much. Yes, they've allowed a lot of yards, but they haven't allowed a lot of points. They're still winning when it comes to that. And, and so when you look at this, I mean, a lot of Oklahoma fans, when, when you look at this defense, a lot of the games, they're averaging less than two points per drive on this mm-hmm. defense. So, I mean, with with this offense, they just need to sustain drives, go out there and waste some clock, and win this game. Uh, and I think I think Oklahoma pulls it out. Uh, I'm, I'm looking right now. It looks like Oklahoma's a 12.5-point favorite. I don't know if I can take them at 12.5. Oh, I guess it moved down to 10. So they're a 10-point favorite right now. I might be able to take them as a 10-point as a favorite. Uh, that's that's pushing it really close for me. I might even buy that down to 9.5 uh, or, or 8.5, something like that. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, looking at Oklahoma, I think they win this game. TCU hasn't been great, but I think TCU is also going to be firing on all cylinders. It's an it's an early game, which makes me nervous because Oklahoma doesn't perform well in these early games. Um, but it's it's going to be over on Fox, 11 a.m. kickoff. Uh, it's, it's going to be electric, man, and and I hope that Sooners can pull that out. Even if they don't make it to the Big 12 championship game, a 10-win uh, season, that's exactly what you hope for if you're Oklahoma this year, uh, just moving forward. And I think I think this defense has made strides. Dylan Gabriel is expected to start. Uh, so he's supposed to be back in. Uh, he did have an upper body injury, which I'm assuming was something along the concussion protocol. Uh, and so that's what took him out of the second half last week. But Jackson Arnold, even if he's in, I think he's a, if a phenomenal quarterback. He showed his talent last week. Uh, and I think he kind of worked his way into it too. Uh, so I like Oklahoma quite a bit. I think they could prob- probably win this, th- this thing by 10 points. I'm taking Oklahoma against the spread. Uh, TCU's not good. Um, I like Oklahoma. There's still something to play for here. Um, even if Dylan Gabriel doesn't take the first snap or whatever, um, I like I like Oklahoma. Um, TCU's just been a, a rotating door at quarterback this year. They've dealt with injuries. They're thin. Uh, just lost a ton of experience from last year. Um, I like Oklahoma. The playmakers. And, uh, yeah, man, like you said, the, the job that, that Brent Venables, if he, if he can win this game Saturday, the job that he's done already for the University of Oklahoma is impressive. So 
uh, I think he gets this win, and uh, I think you guys get a lot of momentum going into whatever bowl game that you get selected for. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's 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 exciting to see this this kind of a season. Of course, a, a really le- a big letdown losing those two games back to back. On top of that, mm-hmm. uh, even worse, and two teams that you shouldn't have lost to, and especially the way that it all played out. But uh, a huge shout out to Drake Stoops, man. This this dude came out and and he, starting off, he's a, he's a son of a legend. Because he's Bob Stoops' son, uh, so a lot of expectations kind of put on you, maybe, uh, even as a walk-on. But he walks on, makes it to Oklahoma, and he's always been that safety blanket for any quarterback that's played with him because they know that he's going to catch the ball. They know that he's going to grind. But he runs routes better than just about anybody on that field. And and now he's racking up uh, 755 yards and nine touchdowns on this season. Uh, it's, it's electric. Even when, in, in away games, when you hear Sooner Nation yelling, Stoops! You know, it's just... Oh, it gives you the chills, but I, I love this dude. I love watching him play. Um, Josh, what about Danny Stutz, uh Danny Stutzman? Yes, his Instagram post. Oh, I didn't see his Instagram post. What did he post? I'm gonna have okay. to look it up now. It's a, it's a picture of him like jumping up and swinging his arm, and he says, "I'm like communion, that cracker with the juice." <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to take that. Like I said, when I read, look, he posted it and I read it and I was like, what? And then I was like thinking about it and he was, I like read it again. I was like, dude, that is the funniest Instagram post I've ever seen. I see it now. I like that. Even Christian, <laughs> even Christian McCaffrey and little Yachty and stuff like, like he's getting some big name yeah. people commenting on it. Yeah. I love, I love this dude, man. He is, he is electrifying. He is the heart and soul to that defense. Him coming back in last week was a huge boost to the defense. And he he's the reason why I think that, you know, this this offense is or this defense is so good. Uh him and Ethan Downs, uh, you know, just those two together and then Canick comes in and makes big plays here and there. Uh and, you know, hopefully we have Gentry Williams back in. I don't know what his status is, but he's been another guy. It's it's just this this secondary doesn't let up these huge plays the way that you've seen in years past. Even last year. Uh and, and last year going against TCU, that was what that was what did it. And I think I think Dylan Gabriel really wants to play in this game too, because he got taken out in that game last year. Uh, and, and that's where he had that that targeting call that knocked him out, and and it, it sucked because I don't think that other dude meant to target him, and you could tell he didn't, and he he was distraught that he even that he even hurt him, uh, and then on top of that he's kicked out of the game, so uh, it was it was an emotional uh, an emotional game for him last year being knocked out of that, not playing against Texas last year, he beats Texas this year, now he's going against TCU and he's going to be able to finish a game against them hopefully, uh, and so it, it's going to be an exciting game. I'm I'm really hopeful for him and. Man, 10, 10 wins. That's that's all you can really hope for right now. Uh, and then Big 12 championship hopes, um, but we're going to have to cheer for BYU hard. Uh, and you know what? BYU is fighting for, for a sixth win to make it to a bowl game too. So it's it's not totally out of the realm. It's just I don't yeah. know how you stop Ollie Gordon. That dude is phenomenal. I think he deserves to be in the Heisman talk. Uh, as, as as much as Oklahoma State's not a good, good team by any means, uh, but Ollie Gordon puts that team on his back. I think he deserves to be in the Heisman talk. I hope he makes a trip to New York just because that dude is, he's just a fighter and he's, he's hurt every game, but he still goes out and keeps on battling and playing through it. And, and he's just an animal. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, shout out to, to OSU. Uh, the little brother had to, had to win one this year. Uh, and so we, we had to give it to him. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I just, I, I, I hope that BYU can pull it off on uh, that way. That way Oklahoma makes it there to the big 12 championship game, go out with one last hoorah. And if they don't, uh, then we're, we're Texas fans after that. So we'll, we'll, we'll put those horns up for that game. But let's go on to the next one. We've got Mizzou at Arkansas. Uh, Arkansas, I don't know. Do you think Arkansas needs to, to part ways with with their coach? Yeah, but they just brought him back. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, I think yesterday morning they decided. I guess I didn't, that, I didn't see. Maybe I wasn't in the loop. I didn't see that they got rid of him. No, no, no. Um, they, oh, they they were they signed a deal with him. The, yeah, they were on the fence, and they're bringing him back for like one more year. Oh man, like their, their, their AD said that uh, like they weren't going to fire him, and he'll stay around for next season. I mean, I yeah. think they've got the the talent on their team to be a good team too. I mean, you saw it whenever whenever when they went against Alabama. I think that's a good example to use because Alabama's looking really good right now. I think Alabama. 
deserves to be in the in the talk for one of those top teams until they lose to Auburn on Saturday, of course. But uh, outside of that, uh, you know, Alabama's a really good team, and, and Arkansas stood their ground against Alabama. You know, they weren't they weren't going down without a fight. And so I think you've got the dudes on your team. It's just there's there's schemes not put into place. There's there's certain key moments. I think clock management has been an issue for them. Uh, and there's just a lot of things that all really fall back on the head coach. Uh, and so I think Pittman. I, I I don't know. I feel like it's it's probably time just to call it quits. But I I yep. do give them I I do give them something for trying to hold on to it, you know, and Hey, let's give you one more shot because I do think there's certain times where it's like, man, he had a tough break. And all of a sudden next year, maybe he goes out and has, uh, you know, an, an 11 game win season or, you know, 11, 11 win season and goes up to the SEC team. Who knows? Um, so maybe that is in the books. And I, I guess it's always hard to let somebody go knowing that that's a possibility. I don't think that's a, that's a possibility, but it's out there. Uh, there's, there's, you know, if you want to take that at plus 15,000, why not go for it? Um, but <laughs> looking at this, this game, Mizzou has been one of those teams. I love watching Mizzou this year, seeing what they've put together, Luther Burden, uh, and then Brady cook that, that, that duo that they've got there on offense. And this defense has just been strong. They've been a, a tough defense and I, I picked them, uh, you know, I picked them to, to cover the spread against Georgia and I got a little bit of heat from that. And then look, they covered it. Uh, they, they stuck in that game. And this is a good Mizzou team. I really like what they're building over there, and I, I think they've got a lot of potential going forward. I think uh, Mizzou pulls this out. Uh, I don't know what the the spread is looking like on that game, um, but I, I can pull that up. But uh, anyways, I'm, I'm, re- I'm really liking Mizzou right now in, the, in this game against Arkansas. It's uh, Missouri minus nine. Hey, you take minus that big nine. old hammer, you take that big old hammer, and you hammer that some gun because Mizzou – all right, they're covering. I think they boat race Arkansas. I really I'm, do. I'm going to pull a Baker Mayfield and plant a flag in that that cover, man. Plant Just it. Plant plant it. it. Right in the middle. Mizzou is waxing Arkansas. Uh, I don't think it's close. Um, just what Missouri can do through the air on the ground. Their defense uh, stepped up big last, last week against Florida, made enough plays to win. They're hot. Um and Eli Drinkwitz is about to win 10 games as Missouri's head coach. Uh, kudos to him, man. Heck of a year. Yeah, and, and finishing right there, uh, they, I believe they're still second in the SEC East yep. too, aren't they? Which yep. still doesn't make any sense how they're in the East and Alabama's in the West. That will never make sense. Um, but I'm ready for every every conference to just do away with divisions because I think next year – every conference is going to be done with them. So that's that's an amazing thing. Uh, I, I love that so much better. It uh, makes way more sense, especially when you look over at the Big Ten. Uh, I, I, I guess you can give it to Iowa this year. They they do have – I'm pretty sure they're sitting at 9-2. and two, So I guess you can give that to them. But I don't. I just don't like seeing Iowa go against Michigan or Ohio State for the for the Big Ten championship game right now. Yeah. Like that's, that's not cool to me. I think it should be a rematch uh, of Ohio State and Michigan. But let's jump on to the next game. We got Texas Tech and Texas – this, this is a scary game for, for Texas because you can't come into this game expecting to win. You don't want to overlook your opponent. Uh, and you pretty much have the Big 12 clinched for the most part. Uh, just win this game and walk out. But Texas Tech has, has been hanging around this year. Uh, they started off really slow. They didn't perform the way that I, I, I think we all talked about Texas Tech. I was picking them as one of my Big 12 champions uh, at the beginning of the season. You did too? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I just... Looking at Texas Tech, they didn't perform the way that we expected them to, but they're still a good team, uh, and we, we've seen that. We've seen how they performed against Oregon. We see, saw, you know, I think they had that heartbreaking loss to Wyoming, who turned around, and it looked like Wyoming was a little bit better there towards the, the, towards the beginning of the season. But, uh, yeah, I mean, just Texas Tech, they, they're not a great team, but they're still good enough in this rivalry where it wouldn't surprise me to see the upset in this game. Uh, and so Texas has just got to recognize their opponent uh, and understand that I think Quinn Ewers should still be back in. Uh, I'm not sure what what uh, Jonathan Brooks looks like for for Texas right now. I don't know if he's expected to play. Um, but regardless, it looked like they did just fine without him, uh, and it looked like that offense was still rolling just fine. Xavier Worthy uh, putting on a show there, and and Quinn Ewers he he came back in and he looked really good last week. Uh, and so I was I was really proud of of how Texas looked, uh, and and I'm I'm going to be cheering for Texas. I hope they win because they need to go. Uh, if if Oklahoma can't make it to the Big Twelve championship, we we need Texas to win to send the Big Twelve out with an SEC win. Hmm. Um. And it, it looks like uh, Texas is a 14-point favorite right now. Uh, I don't know about that. 
in a rivalry yeah, game like this? I don't know if they win this game by 14 points. Uh, eight but points? Like 8 to 10 yeah. maybe? Yeah. Um, it all comes down for me, a Queen Ewers uh, taking care of the football. Absolutely. Do not turn the football over. Texas has been floating around, and they've been flirting with uh, choking it away. You know, they, they, they they've – They've skimped by. Um, I just you, I can't. You, you, want, you want to know a stat that is is very true, and and you can take it for what it's worth. What Oklahoma, Oklahoma, and Texas are the two most penalized teams in the Big Twelve this year. Take really? that for what it's worth, and those penalties have also and and they also have the least penalties. Uh, Texas has the least penalties against, uh, you know. So or uh, I guess. Their 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 opponents have the least least amount of yeah. uh, penalties. So I mean, just looking at that, take it for what it's worth. But I think the conspiracy is real, man. Mm. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. They've they've been they've been big time penalties too to to really kind of twist a lot of these games around. You know, we we look at like Oklahoma and that pass interference in the end zone on Stoops that didn't get called game changer. Really, I mean, you can't you can't rely on the refs to make the calls. Right? You need to you need to put it away. So I don't ever blame the refs for a for a loss. Um, but then, you know, with Texas, I think that K-State game, that was a lot of just officiating that just, it, it, it didn't look pretty. And, and there's a lot of calls on uh, against Texas that I just didn't agree with. But just take it for what it's worth. And my that is my biggest fear, Josh, is uh, Quinn Ewers holding on to the football, not making the big mistake. If he does it, I think Texas wins. If he holds on to the ball, I think Texas wins. If he starts turning the ball over – I think Texas could lose this game. Uh, Texas Texas Tech is going to score. Um, their defense hasn't been of the caliber that, that we were used to the past two years of Texas Tech, but they're still athletic. They make plays. Um, I think Texas ultimately wins this game. Uh, I just don't know if they cover the spread. Yeah, I'm not taking them to cover the spread. I would definitely take them to win. I would take them maybe like a minus seven and a half to minus nine and a half, somewhere in that range. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's about as high as I would go on them. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, looking at these two teams, I mean, Texas Tech, they're on a good little win streak. They're on a three game win streak because uh, they, they beat TCU, Kansas, and UCF in back to back to back weeks. Uh, so looking at what they've they've put together, I think they've got some some good wins. And Texas just doing what they need to do to win games, uh, and especially with Quinn Ewers out there for a few games. Uh, and I was surprised to see him back in last week against Iowa State too. Uh, I didn't expect him to be back in already. So I thought he wasn't going to be back in until possibly the Big 12 championship game, if that. Uh, so I, I was happy to see him back in, and I'm right there with you. As long as they can they can keep uh, the the turnovers on their side, you know, keep the ball in their hands, uh, and then you know, looking looking to guys like Xavier Worthy to have another big game. Uh, I think you're going to need to rely on him. He's only had four touchdowns this year. Uh, we're going to need a bigger game from him, and I think he he shows up in, in key moments and gets you big time plays. But we're going to need to see him in the end zone. Um, but let's go on to our next game. And oh, did you have something else? No, 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 I was just saying that's a fact. Uh, Going to need Xavier Worthy to take the top off of that defense. Yeah, absolutely. But let's go on to our last game that we're going to cover for the Friday slate, uh, and then we'll get to more college football on Saturday. Um, but we've got Oregon, Oregon State. Blake, you're the biggest Oregon fan I know. Uh, so, you know, let's talk about your team. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, just had to, <laughs> had to throw a little shade there. But uh, it, you are a big Bo Nix fan, though, uh, cheering for Bo. Uh, and and this, this is his his recap, you know, or I, I, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, this is his kind of swan song to put it all out there. This is his last game, uh, his last regular season game in college football. And he can put everything out there and he can, he can put a, up a phenomenal ending to his, his season, to his career. Uh, the dude has been phenomenal. We, we, we called him uh, a lot of us uh, who, who were kind of a little bit of haters on him. that when he was there at, at uh, Auburn, we called him uh, Bo Picks. Not this season, dude. He's only thrown two interceptions this season, and he's been phenomenal, lighting it up. And it's it's really tough because I think if it comes down to a matchup again, the winner between him and Michael Penix Jr., I think that you have to give give them the, the trophy. But he's absolutely in the Heisman uh, race right now. Oregon State's got a a very scruffy defense, though. They're not going to be an, an easy team uh, to to go down to, and. It, you know, I know they lost last week to Washington, basically put them out of the race for the Pac-12 championship game, but they can still play spoiler and and knock Oregon out of it. 
Uh, and so I think Oregon State, uh, I, I think this is a, this is a game you're going to have to be careful in. But looking at it right now, I guess it's sitting at minus 14 for Oregon. Uh, and the, the total is looking like 62 and a half. Uh, for both of those, I think I think Oregon can cover, uh, and knowing how high powered both of these offenses can be, uh, I, I think I'd also look at the over on that that game as well. But uh, I'm I'm going to take Oregon. I think they I think they come out and they have a a final the the final game of the regular season and come out and just have this a big game to really go out on on a good note uh, and then push their way to a college football playoff berth possibly. So I, I like Oregon in this game. I think Oregon State's going to put up a fight. Uh, and I think it's going to come down to the fourth quarter, but I think that's when Oregon turns on the Jets, ends up winning by maybe 15 to 18 points, some, somewhere around there. I can, really, I can really see them laying on on the hammer down here uh, towards the end. I'm with you. Uh, I trust Bo Nix more than I do DJU. Uh, oh, absolutely. He's not good on the road. He wasn't good last week at home. I know it was raining, but he threw two picks. Um. Yeah, I think it'll be a dogfight in the first half. I think Oregon opens it up in the second half. Bo Nix cementing his Heisman Trophy. Um, and, well, I'm not going to say cementing yet, but uh, if he can get revenge on Penix, I think he definitely wins the Heisman Trophy. Oh, yeah. um, so, I like the Ducks. The Ducks are still playing for something. They're playing for the college football playoffs. Dan Lanning seems locked in. Um, and, and it's a night game in Autzen electric atmosphere so uh give me the ducks by i'm with you man i say i say the ducks win by three scores give me 17 yeah i like it see right around 17 i think they can cover that 14 points uh i believe in them uh and and you're right too man so i I had to pull this up too to look at it so michael Penix jr is sitting there at uh 3,695 total yards 30 touchdowns seven interceptions uh, where Bo Nix is sitting there with thir- 3,539 yards, 35 touchdowns, and only two interceptions on the year. I mean, that's two guys that have just played their hearts out and yeah. and have been key players in the Pac-12 on the, on the swan song of the Pac-12 too, man. I mean, it is, I just I love to see the way that it's all going out, uh, and and it's it's coming down to a really exciting ending too. But uh, let's go ahead and get over to our fan duel picks. For tonight, uh, we're going to go over to to those. But before we do, I want to let everybody know that you can go to rising2.com slash FanDuel. You'll see that up over on the side banner. Uh, there will also be a link down in the, the, the description. Uh, if you go over there and sign up with for FanDuel by going to rising2.com slash FanDuel, you can bet $5 and win $150 instantly in bonus bets. It's an amazing deal. It's an amazing way to get started. Everyone needs a sports book that they can rely on, a sports book that is going to give them great odds and great uh, promos and all kinds of stuff within that that sports book and FanDuel has been one of the best. Uh, I love all of the profit boosts that they constantly give you every day. There's a new profit boost available. Take advantage of those and also take advantage of this deal. You can bet five dollars and you will get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets if you sign up at Rising2.com/FanDuel. Uh, that promotion may vary based on your location and uh, you must be 21 or older to participate. And please, gamble responsibly. But we are going to throw out our FanDuel bets. Uh, right now, let's see, I'll, I'll pull this up real quick because uh, I know that we had, actually, I've got it right here. I guess we've got, I'm still in the lead, uh, and I've, I've actually taken a pretty big lead here, uh, and it looks like I'm, I'm up over three units. Uh, you're down uh, to, I, you, you went down a little bit. You guys, you and Jeremy both had an 0-2 night the last time right. that we had uh, a FanDuel little uh, competition. You went down to where you're .91 units ahead. So you're still in the plus, and you're in second place because Jeremy is now minus .2, uh, minus two, .23 units. So he's he went down a little bit the other night. Uh, he was trying to take some underdog bets and, and getting a little greedy, trying to jump up in the standings. Uh, it just wasn't working. So I'm going to have to get Jeremy's picks from him later on. He was working whenever I tried getting them from him. So uh, I'll, I'll make sure to get those from him, and I'll also get this graphic put out uh, at the end uh, of, of this, uh, I guess of the, at the end of Thursday. So I'll get that graphic put out so everybody can see where we end up in the standings after. But Blake, what do you got for your fan duel bets of the night? Um, of tonight. Uh, well, Thursday, Thursday. Yeah. So oh, yeah. it's tonight when this is released, I guess. Yeah. Which ones did I pick Josh? Uh, so I know you, you told me just before the show, you had Ole Miss minus 10 and a half at minus one Oh five, right? 
Yeah, and then uh, I think I had the Packers covering. Right? Yeah, Packers, Packers covering seven and a half points. That's a minus one ten on FanDuel right now. So we'll lock those in at those odds. Uh, really good odds to have right now too. So uh, you can definitely jump up a little bit, especially if I were to go down the way that you guys had an 0 and two night. If I went down, you could still jump up. And I think this should be the last night of our competition, if I remember correctly too. If the if I've got the calendar correctly in my head, uh, so. Uh, yeah, you, you, you have a pretty good chance of, of jumping up there a little bit again. Uh, I've been having a pretty good month, man, so I'm going to keep it on a roll. I'm going to pick the Lions versus the Packers, uh, and it's going to be there. That I'm going to pick the over in that game at 46.5, and, and that was at minus 118. And then the 49ers to cover minus 7 on their spread. I think the, the 49ers can cover that, and that's at minus 115. So I'm just looking to close out the month in a, in a good uh, night, at least a 1-1. One and a one. I can't go 0-2. Um, but I'd love a two and O right now. And I think you and Jeremy are really needing that two and O kind of night. Um, but, uh, man, it's been really fun. Uh, and I think next month I've got, I've got it picked out for how we can, how we can decide for the winter too. I didn't want to do it this month cause I wasn't a lead whenever I finally decided what we, what we were going to do for the winter. Uh, and so I was like, well, that's not fair. Cause I already had the lead. And, uh, so next month we'll, we'll put on a little, a little prize pool, uh, for one of us to win there at the end of the, at the end of the, uh, uh, month, but next month it'll be a different, a different, uh, sports book too, since we've got this deal where we can choose several different sports books. Uh, we'll, we'll see what we can, what we can do there. But right now, all of us really sitting pretty, pretty well. I mean, until this last night that we had, uh, everyone was sitting there at plus, I think we were over plus seven units. Uh, so that was, that was sitting really well for people who don't know what units are. If you take your bet, so I'm, I'm doing the math with a $10 bet, uh, per bet. Uh, so, you know, if you were to take that times your units. So, uh, with me being plus three units, uh, that means if I were to do a 10 bet, uh, you know, a $10 bet, I'm up $30 total. Uh, so that's, that's the way that that looks. Uh, so it's been a lot of fun, man. Uh, that's pretty much all we got for you guys today though. Make sure to go follow us on social media. Uh, you can find us on Facebook X formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, uh, all that kind of fun stuff. We're also on TikTok, uh, doing some fun stuff over there and maybe we'll, we'll try to keep on grinding out some new content over on all of those platforms and you can find everything that we do over at rising2.com that's r i i s i n g uh, to.com so you can check us out over at rising2.com uh, and if you're watching on youtube please hit that subscribe button we're on our way to 10,000 we're trying to get there before the end of college football season it's crazy we started off we barely reached 5,000 i think it was week 1 uh, of college football season, uh, week one or week two, some, something like that. And we're already up over 8,000. Uh, so it's been a huge boost right now. And it's all thanks to you guys. Uh, so we thank you guys all for all of your love and support. Uh, so hit that subscribe button. You can hit that like button. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, you, get, you can give us a five-star review. Uh, if you don't listen on either of those, you can also give us a review on the website. Uh, you, can, you can see that down in the description down below as well. But guys, we thank you all so much for all your love, all the support that we've gotten from you guys. And until next time.